Hello and welcome to the episode 291 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we have a new face showing up with Aquariman, the recording of new songs for Beatles for Sale and John Lennon's drug bust. On the 18th of October 1957, the Quarrymen performed at the new Clubmore Hall in Liverpool with their new guitar player, Paul McCartney. The band also featured Len Gary on T-chest bass, Eric Griffiths on guitar, Colin Hanton on drums, and John Lennon on guitar and voice. Stage Nerves played a nasty trick on Paul, who made a mess of his solo during the band's cover of Arthur Smith's Guitar Boogie, a hit from 1946. Two years later, in 1959, George Harrison, John Lennon and Paul McCartney performed together at the Empire Theatre in Liverpool for an audition for ATV's new programme to find TV stars, TV Star Search. Having kicked out Ken Brown from the Quarrymen only the previous week, they decided to perform as Johnny and the Moondogs, explaining to the organizers that the rhythms in the guitars when they questioned their ability to hold the stage without a drummer. Unlike previous auditions in 1957, the trio qualified for the regional finals. We'll cover that in episode 319. In 1960, the Beatles' first residence in Hamburg, West Germany, went on with another night performance at the Kaiser Keller. On this date in 1961, the Beatles, still featuring Pete Best on drums, performed a lunchtime and an evening concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. On the 18th of October 1963, the Beatles, now in their definitive lineup with Ringo Starr taking the place of Pete Best, were busy with the filming of another TV appearance at the Granada TV Centre in Manchester. The programme was seen at 6.30, aired today between 6.30 and 7.00 pm, with the Fabs miming a performance of She Loves You. In 1964, the Beatles used what was supposed to be a rest day from their British tour to get into the EMI studios in Abbey Road, London, and have nine hours worth of recording sessions for their upcoming releases. Between 2.30 and 11.30 pm, the band completed six tracks for the Beatles for Sale LP and a new A-side for their next single. The day began with the recording of an introduction and a coda for eight days a week, continued with a medley of Little Richard's Kansas City and Hey, 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 completed in two takes and featuring producer George Martin on piano. After that, the band gave a solid performance for Mr. Moonlight. Four more takes were recorded after the four botched attempts of the 14th of August session. See episode 226 for that. This time, Take 8 was deemed satisfactory enough to deserve a place on the LP. Before this recording session, Eight Days a Week was supposed to be the Beatles' next single, but John Lennon's I Feel Fine, recorded next, stole the show. The song had grown around the riff that John had devised while in the studio, but it was the song intro that ended up being its most outstanding feature and a sign that the Beatles were starting to explore new sonic territories in their music. The work was completed with eight takes of the rhythm track and one of overdubs, mostly for the lead and harmony vocal parts. After that, the band had the energy to continue with I'll Follow the Sun, a song that Paul McCartney had written in 1959, featuring Ringo Starr using his knees as percussions, and three more early rock and roll standards – Carl Perkins' Everybody's Trying to Be My Baby, Chuck Berry's Rock and Roll Music, and Buddy Holly's Words of Love. Another recording session took place in 1965. The main task of the day was to complete If I Needed Someone with Vocals, guitar and tambourine, something the Beatles managed to do so efficiently 
that there was time to attempt the recording of a new song, John Lennon's In My Life. The attempt was successful. The Fabs nailed the song down in three takes, although the middle eight was left incomplete, needing some sort of solo to wrap things up. All of this was achieved between 2.30 and 5.45 pm. In 1967, while the editing of the Magical Mystery Tour film went on as usual at Norman's Film Productions, the Beatles attended the world premiere of How I Won the War at the London Pavilion. As you will recall, this film saw John's cinematographic solo debut and was shot in West Germany and Spain in the second half of 1966. The premiere was followed by a party held at singer Silla Black's apartment. Let's close the episode with two events happened in 1968. Between 12 noon and 1 pm, engineer John Smith, working alone at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road, completed the work on the White Album, fixing small imperfections in the mono master tape, replacing Your Blues and Don't Pass Me By, and sending the new, corrected master to the EMI cutting engineer. The real news of the day, though, was the arrest of John Lennon and Yoko Ono for cannabis possession by the drug squad of Scotland Yard. The arrest took place at 11.30 am in a flat at 34 Montague Square, London. The place was owned by Ringo Starr, and it had previously been rented by Jimi Hendrix, who had to leave when John and Yoko asked Ringo to use the flat while looking for a new home. Starting their searches at 11.30 am, the police promptly found 219 grains of cannabis raisin in various places a binocular case, a film can, and a cigarette roller. John later recalled that the objects were in one of the boxes of the move from his house, which were unopened, and probably the cannabis had been there for over a year. John and Yoko were escorted outside, where there was a crowd of photographers and journalists, and led to Paddington Green, where they were charged for possession. Fun fact! Allegedly, EMI's head, Sir Joseph Lockwood, called the station to talk to Lennon and give him advice on how to deal with the situation. When Lennon was given the phone, he said, This is Sergeant Lennon, can I help you? Segue with the help you can give me. Visit www.simonmas.com support and you'll find all the things you can do to support this podcast and my other music-related creations. No donation is too small, no good deed goes unnoticed. Of course, you can choose to do nothing, but then you'd miss out on the chance to say that you were there from the start. Anyhow, tomorrow, if you care to join me, we'll talk about how the drug charges to John and Yoko will be discussed in court. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.